Do you live in the US and want fast, fresh and tasty meals without the hassle of shopping or all that hard work preparation? Well, don't you worry. As a lazy man, I've got you covered. Try America's number one meal kit service, HelloFresh, and get yourself fresh, pre-portioned ingredients delivered direct to your door. So why not eat well, stay healthy, and avoid the cost of regular takeout by trying HelloFresh? Just click the link in the description below for a special limited time discount and free shipping as well. Enjoy. Well, we're back to domestic action after a humbling in Europe in this build a nation save. But this is not going to be about us, this story. It's deadline day. Of course, there might be some action there. We've also got a game to play as well. But other clubs are building a pathway in Europe, and we're going to have to focus on them. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 73 of Lifting Spirits with me, Daniel. We are back with Distillery today for a tough trip to Cliftonville on deadline day. Albeit we've got a 100% record and they have not picked up a point yet. We've also got the rest of the transfer window to get through. But as I mentioned in the intro, it is all about the other teams. We've got some interesting moments on the transfer front, albeit they haven't quite come off this time. And we'll take a look at some European stories being created by our colleagues in the Irish Premiership. Because there are potentially some very big moments here. We'll be hoping that they use that money wisely too. So if you're looking forward to it and seeing how we've started, as well as meeting a couple of new signings for us as well, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. It promises to be the first season ever really in one of these saves, where we're more focused on other sides than we are ourselves. So let's go and get straight into it by dealing with our bits first and then we'll move ahead to deadline day and focus on the rest of Northern Ireland. Well as you can see we have had three outs since the last episode, one of them perhaps a bit of a surprise, not one I was expecting or anticipating and in terms of the ins we've had a couple join the club as well, players who I hope will make an impact in this squad, albeit they're not going to be superstars but we focused on building a bit more of a Northern Irish squad. We're having to rely a bit more on release players from Linfield, Larne, etc. But for now, let's look at the players that have left. And we start with backup keeper Ethan Ross. There was obviously that situation at the start of last year. He played in all the cup games then, but we couldn't register him for the league because we'd done ourselves with the registration rules and homegrown players, etc. But Coventry came in out of the blue and offered money. And for a keeper who's not starting for us, who at 33 has got the chance to go back to England and earn much bigger money. It felt wrong to keep him. He'd been such a legend for us. He saved that winning penalty to get us into Europe in the Irish Cup final. He's been a stalwart. He deserves huge credit and he's a player that I'm a massive fan of. But Coventry came in, £12,000. We get a friendly out of that next summer as well. It's a really good deal for the football club. Followed by loans for Ben Williams, who's gone to Rochdale. He'll be there for the rest of this season. They're actually paying a loan fee on top of all of the money. The other one to go out is someone we tried to get rid of all summer. And Cameron Cooper has now managed to do just that. They're paying his wages. And of course, they're giving us a little bit of money as well. He's a decent player. He's out of contracts at the end of the calendar year. It was just about getting him off the books till then. So for now, he's gone to be the backup striker on the bench at Maidstone. With those three out though, we needed at least two wins because we lost a backup keeper, we lost a backup centre half. We had two strikers, I didn't worry about that. But the first one to come in, and I'm going to struggle with this name because I'm very immature, Kian Boobia comes in. He's a 22-year-old Northern Irish under-21 international. I think we'll call him Kian from this point forward so I don't get myself in trouble. But he is a two and a half star centre half, three star at right back bizarrely. In fact, he's gone up to three star across the board now. We tried to sign him earlier in the summer. We'd been keeping an eye on him. So he was getting released by Linfield. We knew he was going. Homegrown in the nation. Has played for Linfield since he came through the academy. He's gradually reduced his wage demands throughout the summer. We had him on trial in June, but he wanted about 800 quid. And then when no one picked him up a couple of months later, we pounced and we got him within our wage structure, which is generally the way we're having to work. He's not the most naturally fit, so probably not good to be a regular. But he's great in the air, he's got good positioning, which you know I love in a centre-half. And his mental attributes aren't bad, so no problem with him. Very good squad addition, and probably a slight upgrade on Williams, which is all we could have asked for. On the flip side of that, someone who's probably not going to be as close to the first team, but is also an important addition, 
With Ethan Ross out comes in Darren Murphy. He was one of two goalkeepers we had on trial and unfortunately he's not actually homegrown in the nation. He came through at Burnley and had a loan spell in Scotland but never quite made it back to Northern Ireland in time. But 150 quid a week, we're actually saving money financially. He's now rated as well as Ethan Ross and he's got the potential to be as good as Kane. He's a good goalkeeper. So we're playing regularly in the Cups. You can see he's played in a League Cup once already. Kept a clean sheet. He's a solid keeper. And he's played at youth level for Northern Ireland. He's a good one to sign. I really think we've managed to do well out of that. And overall, we're no weaker than we were last year. We've not had one of those summers where we've been able to sign a big upgrade. We've not had a single senior sign-in, actually, have we, in terms of the first 11. We've managed to add a bit of depth to the squad, replace what we lost, and hopefully come January... Michael Hammond might be available again. We're going to have to wait like we did with Kean from Linfield. Get released. Does anyone pick him up? And can we then get him within the wage bill? That's what we've got to hope for. For now, though, let's have a look at how that's affected the schedule. You were, of course, with me for that humbling in the second leg at Salzburg. A couple of injuries picked up then as well. But it has not stopped our start to the league season. Because we beat Dungannon on the opening day by four goals to nil. Two for Mark Wilson, who continues his prolific start and two for Morgan Griffiths, who's in a form of his life. More on him later. We back that one up with a 3-2 win at Coleraine, a side we've struggled with at times. We did fall behind twice in that game, but Morgan Griffiths got two, and Ampardi managed to pick up a goal as well. Charlie Lindsay got two for them, and he is a very good player. Just to put a bit of perspective into it in Northern Ireland, as someone who's come in from Rangers and Ross County in Scotland, and he's showing that he's a really good player at this level. So other sides improving too. We then won 1-0 against Knock Brader. Jonathan McCall-Hatton with a late goal there. Came into the squad. We played a reserve side, but we managed to get the win. So now we face Cliftonville on deadline day. It's an important game for us. It's a real opportunity, but we've got to move down the page a bit. I'm sure you can see it. Those of you that have been regulars for years here. In all the excitement last year, when you were asking in the comments, what's the big advantage of finishing second? I talked about not worrying who wins the cup. I talked about not worrying about whether you're going to be in a playoff, just having the esteem of getting past Lan and the likes. But I forgot the biggest thing. We are in the SPFL Trust Trophy, my favourite competition. Formerly, of course, the Iron Brew Cup, the Tunnock's Caramel Wafer Cup. It's had some great sponsors over the years, but we have been given a pretty tough draw. TNS are still the top side in Wales, as you would expect. If we have a look at them over recent years, winning it every season, they have had a fair few seasons of European football. And yet again, they're into the Europa Conference League. So it's not going to be an easy one, this. They're progressing at a pretty similar rate to Linfield. Maybe the wage is not quite so high given the nation. But they're managing to pick up good players. I mean, look at that. Sariki Dembele is there for them. They've got George Wickens in goal. Legend of our FM21 save with Bangor City. There are plenty of good players in that league. So that's going to be a difficult test. And of course, it will form part of the next episode. But for now, we have got transfer deadline day in Northern Ireland. 16 hours to go in that one. Of course, a real opportunity for Lana and Linfield to get bigger players in. Now they've got that European group stage money again. But for us, we face Cliftonville later in the day. So let's get ahead to that. We'll get all of that stuff out of the way. And then we'll look at who the other two sides have got in Europe. And we'll talk about what they do on deadline day. Back in a moment for kickoff. Well, fitness test time and Curtis Bell is well on his way back to fitness here. Brian Varmer looks like he's all right as well. Colin McCann, of course, struggling for fitness as we've become accustomed to. Today, though, we go to Cliftonville looking to continue our perfect start. Glenarvan have picked up a couple of good experienced pros. They'll probably struggle over the festive period, but they've got the likes of Joel Cooper, well-known name from Linfield in Northern Ireland, and they've won three out of three. Linfield looked very good, very aggressive. They've not suffered domestically just yet. And Glen Torren having a better start after what was a disappointing year before they got into Europe last season. So let's get through the tactical meeting. Let's go and pick our 11. We'll be going back to full strength after the cup game. We'll be back in a minute to run through the team. Here we go then. A very slight change on the bench to what we normally do, mainly because we've got the struggle with Curtis Bell. He's not fit for 90. So I've brought Walker on for Lewis Scott on the left-hand side. Just a more defensive option for us. The rest of the team we pick as we would normally. We've got a great side. We've got real strength in depth. I'm a little torn between Jake Cooper and Harley Jones at centre-half because Jones is improving. Cooper struggled for form this year and I feel like he's starting to decline. So maybe I've already done it in some of the games at home to the bottom half side. So like the Dungannon one. 
but we may well switch him around and see a changing of the guard this year. For the rest of the team though, it picks itself. Morgan Griffiths though, is the man we need to talk about because he has been getting interest and is the first player at my club to get a big offer from another club in the nation. Now, we almost accepted it. We tried to negotiate it up because it wasn't quite to value. But Lahn came in for Morgan Griffiths to try and regenerate their squad. Now, that's a really good sign for us for in a couple of years' time, if we can get to the top of the nation, that those clubs are still trying to sign our players would be a massive benefit. At the moment, though, it was only about a third of his value. I think 25 grand. They offered a big sell-on fee as well. But to be fair, at the moment, it just wasn't quite right. Give it another year or give it another double of price maybe you would have seen something. But at the moment, here's our form player. He's playing for a move which it doesn't look like he'll get. The interest has now waned a bit. And this is the 11 we'll be playing today. Neil Kane in goal with Wilson and Bell back in at fullback. Cooper alongside McClelland at centre-half. Whitehall and Daniels the midfield too. Morgan Griffiths ahead of them. And then Varmer and Pardy on the wings. Mark Wilson on his own up front. And a very strong bench to call upon if we need it. It includes our two new defenders that we've signed this summer. So let's go and submit the team. We go away to Cliftonville, who have caused us trouble in the past. But on this occasion, we should be heavy favourites. They made three changes. Levi Ive still starting. Always gets a red card against us. Hale and McKee, quality players. Both Hales in there, in fact. And some decent players on the bench too. They're starting to regenerate their squads. And you'll see in which sides do it better by who's further up the league. Colrain have started to do it this year. Lahn have had a better summer. Linfield have already made a massive signing on deadline day. So there's a lot of progress in terms of transfers and recruitment. Much better than we saw with Bangor City in FM21. So let's go and get into the first half. We've got a few of the defensive players motivated. We'll see at Cliftonville with a big crowd in. Something we still can't attract at home. Whether we're going to get a point, whether we're going to get three, or whether we'll be humbled by a big home crowd. Well, I can only apologise because half an hour on the clock and we've not yet seen a highlight. One of the positives, I guess, is that Jake Cooper is currently the best player on the pitch, but we've had all the chances. We've not seen any of it. It's been a very strange game of football so far. Most of the games, as you saw from the results this year, have been very aggressive, very attacking, lots of goals at both ends. Not the case in this one, but we're controlling the ball. We're creating more of the chances. We just need a moment of quality. With Griffiths, with Wilson, we expect that to come. But if not, we've got last season's top scorer on the bench. We've got great wingers. As Whitehall's in. Oh, it's off both posts. Header from a set piece. It was the way we want to unlock a team. If you can't find that opening through the middle of the pitch or from open play, then put in a big set piece. Whitehall hits both posts. And with 25 to go, we've got to think about changes. Though so we have got another free kick first with Daniels. To the back post to Curtis Bell. Headed away as far as Griffiths, who has so often been the man this year to make the difference. Into the box he goes, and that's a penalty kick. He's done his job again. It's a brilliant run with the ball. He's got so much better carrying it. And Sean Daniels will now step up to take the spot kick. He comes left-footed. It's the one thing we do miss Muckle Hatton for. But my word, we get away with that one. Straight at Mullen, he dived low. Got a hand to it and almost kept it out. But in the end, he had a weak wrist, just palmed it into the top of the net. We deserve it overall, but probably not based on the quality of that penalty. Let's go and make some changes to see this one out because we do need to make some adjustments here. Huate is going to come on for Varma, who again just building his fitness back up. Should we put him or Pardy on the left-hand side? I think probably Puate suits it more. Wilson will come off for McElhatton. It's his first really poor game of the year. Griffiths could be rested, but I'll leave it for now. We've got Walker on for Bell, who needs to save himself. We'll bring on the new signing, Kean for Wilson. We've done that a couple of times this year. And then going forward, I'm going to take off Morgan Griffiths for Whitehall into attacking midfield. And then that means Barry Bagley on in the Mazala role. Five changes made, 20 minutes to go. A real opportunity to win. Cliftonville not had a shot on target. We've absolutely battered them. We've dominated the game. We've been professional. We've been good on the ball. But we've not been that clinical. And with three minutes of stoppage time to go, it's closer than I would have liked. I just saw our former left winger, Chris Johnston, scoring a winner for Warren Point. But that is about as comprehensive as you can get with a 1-0. Dominated the game, no shots on goal against us, and a really efficient performance. We can go and focus on the rest of the deadline day now. Some big stories from Lan and Linfield in Europe too. We'll be back in a moment to run through all of those and see what else happens in Northern Ireland. 
Well, some bad breaking news coming out of the Republic of Ireland and Derry City because Michael Hammond, our former left back for two years on loan, was on course to become homegrown at the club, has signed a new deal until 2032. He is actually loan listed by the club, but they run happy we didn't play him more last year. We've offered the full wage. We've offered to pay an optional future fee of two and a half million, which was indicated here. We've not been able to get anything done. They're still rejecting it at the minute. I wonder if a grand a month extra as a monthly fee will help. We'll give it a go, see if it works. We're offering all the wages and now a fee too. So fingers crossed that will come off. Six hours to go. It'll be our only signing of the day. We've not had any offers for our stars yet. So let's hope that doesn't change either. Well, here we go. The transfer window has closed. We loaned out one player at the end of the day, which is young Tennant Dykes. He's not going to make it, but good to see him going off to Miola Park and helping another club. The deadline passes and the roundup is big. You can see Linfield star sign in there on deadline day. 350 grand. Lan get a player from Halifax on a free. One of six, which is the most additions by any club. They're regenerating after a poor season last year. The financial update for us is looking good, albeit we can't yet turn pro. And our squad registration is not going to matter because with no one coming in, there is no change to it as it stands. So let's have a quick look at what's happened on deadline day because you can see here that Linfield have gone in big. 350 grand for a player who was playing in the Republic of Ireland for Shamrock Rovers. He's 25, he's a former Republic under 21 international and he's a really good midfielder. Six grand a week as well, they're really pushing the boat out. It's been a good summer for Linfield, they're improving the squad. They're still improving all the facilities as well. But in another player on loan from Aberdeen who's a good striker. And they've got in a player from Millwall too, who's coming back to Northern Ireland. And again, very decent player. So they're improving their squad. They're keeping it largely Northern Irish players or players from the UK. And you can see those facilities just keep getting better. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Balan, on the other hand, it was six players in. They managed to get a few loan deals over the line. So on deadline day, Rasheen Thorpe from Aberdeen, another good addition. Has played a game for Aberdeen, has been on loan at Queen's Park. He's got plenty to offer at this level. They also signed one from Linfield, one from Halifax, and a few free agents as well. Some of them younger players, some for the future, and then some like Kerr McInroy, who is ready to go now. A proper good midfielder. Loads of experience at Queen's Park. You go and look at his history. He's been playing in the Scottish Championship and playing really well. Got loads of experience in a top tier in Scotland too, and is a Celtic youth player. I mean, he's got quality. This is a very different level of signing. Ben may have been the last one a bit in between. He'd been playing in EFL, but signings coming from everywhere. With these two, though, they need a bigger squad because we've got to talk about their future. Lan and Linfield have got quality seasons ahead of them. Linfield have made the European group stages again, which we always come to expect now, but they've made the Europa League. They got revenge against Ferenc Varos. They won 2 1 on aggregate, and they are through to the group stages of Europe's second competition. What's ironic about this one, to be honest, is that they've actually got more winnable games probably than Lan have, who have made it through to the Conference League. So if we have a look at them, they've got a mix of the big games against Frankfurt, against Dinamo Kiev. They've obviously got the SPFL Trust Trophy too, Marseille, Gladbach. But then their last matches here, before these big ones at the end, where they do go to Rangers, which will be interesting. HJK at home and Zurich at home. Two games where you might fancy them to get a result. I'm sure they'll register Ferizaj, their deadline day signing soon. But really, really impressed that they've made it to the Europa League. The second time they've done that. Bellano, they have got through to the group stages again. A 3-2 aggregate win in their qualifying round, or their knockout, sorry. And they have now got a very tough run. They play Everton. They play aside from Romania at home. Barte Borisov, regulars in Europe during my childhood. Rijeka from Croatia. Two sides from Croatia, weirdly, and Galatasaray will be a massive occasion too. So lots of quality games coming up for them. Really pleased to see two sides in the group stages as well. And if we go and have a look at a coefficient overall and what it's done so far this season, things are starting to look pretty good. So let's go to the Nation Club coefficient. Northern Ireland in 35th, having a pretty good year so far. A better one than Bosnia, a similar one to the Republic above it. And of course, better than Cyprus, Serbia, Finland, Bulgaria. Loads of the sides above struggling. So we are managing, with Liechtenstein having their big year coming off as well, to push up into the 20 point somethings, and maybe above a few of these sides. Now, don't forget, 
when it comes to 32nd place, that's when things start to change. Because then you get one in qualifying for the Europa League instead of the Europa Conference League. That is when we start to see progress. We've got to strive to join them next year and get stronger as the year goes on. We kept hold of Morgan Griffiths, which will help with that. And with our only two realistic title rivals, both being behind and lagging in games because they're going to be playing Thursday night football, can we build up a lead in this table and try and get an Irish Premiership title push on? If Linfield and Larn have loads of games in hand, we know they'll probably have the ability to overtake us, but can we at least make it close? That's something we haven't done before. It is the next progression for us. Can we win a cup as well? All of that will be found out as the season goes on. But most importantly, next up is going to be my favourite competition. Forget about Europe for now. Forget about title pushes. We will be back at the start of October to face TNS in the SPFL Trust Trophy. A brilliant competition, one of the lovely perks of being at the top of Wales and Northern Ireland. And we'll play Ballymena or Glentor on either side based on the league table. But that's the plan for next time. Let me know if you're looking forward to seeing that competition return on this channel. If you did enjoy this episode, please put a thumbs up on it. Let me know what you think of the other sides because it's very rare that we're not focusing on our club so much. But those two definitely deserved it today. They're recruiting well, they're doing brilliantly in Europe, and even Linfield aren't suffering with a change of manager. So hopefully that all remains the same. If you want to stay up to date and find out if it does, subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We'll be back here with our Trust Trophy debut in two days' time. But in the meantime, we have got a big finish to the season in our head coach save. It could be a relegation and a sacking on the cards. There's also some big cup games there too. So if you want to catch up with that one and you haven't seen it already, do have a look up in the eye above. There's links there also to the Twitch channel, the football podcast and the blog series too. You can also find the link to HelloFresh below if you are in the US. Get loads of money off your first box, free shipping and help support the channel too. And we'll be back here in a couple of days time to face TNS in my favourite competition. It can't get much better than this. Thank you.